Well, howdy, I'm Robert Carter from the Museum of York County. I'm an interpreter and educator here, and it's time for another creature feature. And today's creature is the Eastern Chipmunk. You can see two of them right here. Scientific name is Tamias striatus, and it's called striate because of these stripes on the back. It has kind of a, a white or cream colored stripe with black on the edges there. So the stripes are very, uh, very prominent. You can see at the, the back of the animal, there's kind of a, a reddish, kind of a rush, rust colored patch there. And then you have the tail. It's not extremely long and it's not uh, covered with hair, but it's not very bushy. Even though they are related to the, our gray squirrel, and they don't have the bushy tail that you find in the gray squirrel. And you can see right here, they have pretty large cheek pouches. And that is so they can put food in there. And you have probably seen uh, Chip and Dale or Alvin and the Chipmunks, and you've seen sometimes they will stuff their faces. And that's, that's what they do, they actually do that. Now, these are primarily gonna be burrowers or stay on the ground. And, but you'd be surprised to know that they are very good at climbing. Oftentimes they will go up in a tree. You just don't see it because they're hiding from you. Eastern chipmunk is found all over the Eastern United States except near the coast. They do not like to be in, in the sandy soil. And here in York County, we're right on the edge of their, of their range. So in the Western part of York County, you're more likely to find them than in the Eastern portions of the county. Now they are primarily seed eaters. You can see right here where there's some acorns, which are, are seeds. But they will also feed on a lot of the, a lot of different types of, uh, of food items, like slugs, got, got a, uh, a larva here that would feed on that. Uh, another little larva here, or actually that's a, uh, a centipede. They could feed on that. Also, if they could find some bird eggs, they'll eat some bird eggs. So pretty much if uh, they can get it in their mouth, they'll eat it. Oh, mushroom is another one of their favorites right there. And actually they're fairly important. When they're present, they're fairly important for spreading the spores of the mushroom. All right, so you see the nuts here, down here and up here, and they, uh, they will bury these when they're preparing for winter. And they, are, they do it two different ways. They can be a scatter hoarder, where they just bury them in various areas in their territory, or they can be a larder. Right here is a larder, where they're storing them up underground. And sometimes they do both, scatter and, and larder. But now if they scatter them, and it's in an area where there's a good bit of moisture, when there's a lot of moisture, you're better able to smell or detect something. So oftentimes when they do that, gray squirrels or other animals will pilfer or they'll steal their food. So in many cases, they do collect a larder and they will, they will keep this for the winter so they can get through. Now, you don't see these as often in the winter. They like to stay underground. This is a, a pretty typical uh, burrow here. That, they'll get down maybe three feet sometimes, but they have the, this burrow, uh, it'll usually have just have one opening. Um, sometimes it may have several chambers that have chambers where they keep their food and other chambers where they'll, they'll sleep. Now during the winter, they don't actually hibernate, but they will kind of, uh, they'll slow their body down some and go into what we call a torpor, which is kind of like a, uh, kind of like a sleep. And then on warmer days, they may actually come out and search around for some food. And, and oftentimes, you'll hear them before you'll see them. Because when they get disturbed, or when they're, they are trying to defend their territory, they make different noises. They can make a little chip noise, really high pitched and distinctive. They also have this little trill noise that they make, and that helps to defend their territory and also warn other chipmunks that danger is close by. Basically, if there's a, some kind of raptor around, you know, a hawk, this is a great snack for a hawk, so they're gonna sound the alarm when they see that. And just about any type of carnivorous mammal will try to eat a, uh, 
being a chipmunk, along with reptiles. Um, a lot of animals have chipmunk on their menu. So they are, uh, they tend to be very alert, always looking for danger, and they're gonna sound the alarm, which is common with a lot of rodents. All right, now the Eastern chipmunk is diurnal. That means they're active during the day. So you're not gonna see these out, out at night. Now, they breed twice a year. So during the, in the spring and then later in the summer, they're gonna produce some offspring. And the female is gonna take care of the offspring. Yeah, the male is gonna mate with the female and the male is, is gone uh, living, its, uh, living its life. And the female is gonna rear the offspring. And what she does is she has her burrow. She keeps her offspring in her burrow. And once they are weaned, and they stop, uh, stop taking milk from her, she abandons them. She goes and finds another burrow. And then the offspring have got to uh, come out of the, the burrow and find their way in life. Now the best habitat for an eastern chipmunk is gonna have some stumps, some rocky outcrops, something like that, where they're able to get a little hole already started. You know, it's a lot of, a lot of work to dig one of these holes if you can find an old stump, like in this case, there's a rotten root right there. And there's a hole right here. So that's a starting place for a chipmunk to make its hole. That makes its life a whole lot easier when it's time to, uh, to build a burrow. So they're gonna look for that kind of habitat. And they really like kind of deciduous forests. Don't find them as much in a, in a coniferous forest. Um, you can find them in town though. You have a, some nice uh, deciduous trees in your, your yard, some hardwood trees. They can, they can live there as long as they have a place which is kind of undisturbed and where you have some old trees where they can uh, start their burrow. And sometimes they will even live under your house. I lived in a house one time where I heard chipmunks all the time and they were just under the house. So the next time you're out in the woods on a, a hike somewhere, keep your ears peeled for a chip or for a trill. Good chance it's gonna be the Eastern Chipmunk. So until our next creature feature, get out there and enjoy your Carolina world.